Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And a couple weeks back, I introduced three new TK75 models from Gamma K, and I said I was going to come back to them. Now I'm coming back to them. I'm starting off with the SE edition. This is supposed to be like the more base version, but actually I, I kind of like this one. Um, now I've only played with them a little bit. I do like to do my reviews where I have as little knowledge as possible about the keyboard so I can kind of discover things along with you guys. But from the little bit that I played with this keyboard, I really, really like. So let's go ahead and open it up and get started. So before we take a look at a keyboard, I like to take a look at what's included in the box. Now with this one, we do have some extra keys. Uh, now these are die sub PBT, but they're pretty thick. Uh, these are the Mac keys. So if you're going to be using them on Mac, you can switch them on and out. I do appreciate when manufacturers include these because um, it, it gives people options. Uh, I know I, I work in Linux and it bothers me to use keycaps that say win on them. It's a super key. That's just me. But, you know, I mean, one of the whole points of mechanical keyboards is customizing it to one's own personal needs as well as likes. So having that ability is a big plus. There's also some extra switches included in here. Now it looks like we have some um, dustproof stem browns. So these are Odumu browns. Now, um, Odumu started out as just the you know cheaper OEM switch manufacturer, but they have really come up and I have been seeing more and more great switches from them. And this one's another one. It's It feels very much like a regular Gatoron Brown, but what it doesn't have is the ping. Um, now, only thing I'm, I'm not too crazy about with a lot of the Otemus, not all, but a lot of them have wing latch tops. I prefer four leg tops. Uh, these wing latches just are a pain in, in just my opinion when it comes to lubing them. But this is a decent, actually, you know what? I, it does actually feel a little bit stronger than a regular brown. It has a nice, like, uh, minor D bump. So you got a little bit of pre-travel and then you get the bump. And it's kind of like in the middle of the stroke. And it feels eh, probably roughly in the 40 gram range. It's light, but not too light. If you want tactile... This actually might be a really good switch to go with. And the fact that there's no ping, you won't have to lube these, is a big plus. We also have a standard wire switch and keycap pull. And we have a nicely braided USB-A to USB-C cable. Um, I prefer these nylon braided ones. I like, I don't know, I like texture. And I prefer these and I prefer when they have strain relief. I've been seeing too many of the, they like, just throw whatever cable we can get in there without strain relief. So when there is strain relief, then you're gonna have a cable that's gonna last you a little bit. And here we are with the Gamma K TK75 SE. Um, to me, SE means special edition. I like it. Um, obviously, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you probably know right off the bat why I particularly like it. Because it's retro. It's that beige, off-white, um, 80s look. And it's got a 9009-like uh, keycap set. It does appear to be in the Cherry Profile. And though it doesn't sound amazing, a lot of these newer boards have what's called the hi-fi layer um, it's not priced in that range so there's that to consider and i will be coming back to this keyboard and i will be giving it the hi-fi treatment uh, which basically it's a combination of pet or other type of plastic as well as a pe foam or ixpe uh, and then maybe some changes in foam depending on what we already have in there. Now that alone, I think will make a huge difference. Um, I'd love to do it now, but I have a backup <laughs> a clut of videos uh, to get to, but I will move it up my list to come back to and get to soon enough because I'm, I'm almost positive that I can get this to sound 
like one of those hi-fi keyboards uh, with very little effort. I mean, very little effort and probably using stuff you've already got in your own house. So keep an eye out for that. And if you really, really want me to get to it, just comment down below. Remind me, light a fire under me and I'll get to it. Now, uh, two out of these three brothers, uh, the TK75 models, come with this, um, well, I guess it's just protective. The top just came off. I, I thought of, of it like a little koozie, like, hey, you know, hey, cheers, man. What you having this weekend? Like a little beer koozie. But I guess it is just a protective so that the aluminum on the knob does not get uh, scratched up or damaged during... Um, shipping or whatever i'm gonna keep it off for right now uh now in in the box we also have a just a quick user guide that shows all of the key combinations now flipping this over real quick i'm gonna guess some of you guys might right off the bat know what keyboard this is quick put your answers down below three two one ah it is using a very similar body as a what was originally the NJ80 uh, from Kiduos. It has been adopted many other times, so this is actually gasket, whereas the original TH80 was not, or the original NJ80 was, I mean, it was, but it wasn't. It was more like a sandwich mount. We do, as we can see, actually have gasket. It's not, you're not going to be bouncing on a trampoline, but you're not dealing with um, the harshness of a tray mount, especially steel plate. PET and IXPE. Hmm. That's curious. Let me check something before, after I check this. Now, the stabilizers, uh, they are fairly well secured, but uh, they are over lubricated. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's. I highly suggest if you get stabilizers like this when you buy a keyboard, especially, you know, stabilizers that you can just take off of the plate, that you take it off, that you either remove the excess grease if you don't have any grease of your, uh, of your own, but if you do have some grease uh, and super lube, uh, dielectric grease, that there's a lot of greases that will work for stabilizers, that you re-lube them and just put just enough on there. Because what happens with this extra stabilizer grease, it's not only is it, you know, good for, you know, allowing smooth motion, that's why it's used on stabilizers, but it also attracts loose dust and dirt in the air. Eventually, you're going to have all that stuff that's in the air that we can't see start to collect and mix in to this, especially gobs of grease. The more grease, the more it's going to track. And eventually, it's going to become like a mud. That mud will make your stabilizers sluggish over time um, to the point that it, it, it can get them stuck or they won't work right. And at that point, you're going to have to take them out and clean them all together. And if there's enough in there and you use them for a while, they're probably going to unbalance the wire and then balancing the wire is just a whole nother thing. I've honestly, I mean, stabilizers are, are, are pretty cheap nowadays. I mean, I think you can buy them individually from pulling keys for like 70 cents, 75 cents, something like that. Whether it's the large, I mean, whether it's the six and a quarter, whether it's the two you. Um, so in my opinion, time is money. Um, if you're wires unbalanced yes you can balance it yourself there's 3d tools you can print out to do it but it's just so much easier and so much quicker just to buy a new wire that you know is new and is not bent it's not warped so but that's just my opinion let me put this back together real quick and i just want to test something out just real quick like now right here i've got some zook bubble gum um, they're what are called hi-fi switches they're a linear switch with a very hi-fi sound obviously um, they're long pole and they have very loud and satisfying pop to their bottom out because we already have hi-fi layers on here i'm curious to see 
Uh, there's actually looks like flex cuts. We have flex cuts on the PC on the plate as well. There might actually be flex cuts on the PCB, but I don't know. I haven't gotten that deep in there yet. So I just want to load up three of these and compare real quick. These are five pin, but all right, they're going in. The plate is flexy, but not too flexy, so it shouldn't be an issue uh, loading up switches. Uh, the GMK series from Zoya. I mean, they're great keyboards, don't get me wrong, but their plates are almost a little too flexy, uh, where a lot of people might have issues with the, the keyboard, but it's not really. It's just that the switch is not fully engaged into the PCB. So obviously, if there's not a good connection, there's going to be issues. So thankfully, this does not have that kind of plate, so we don't have to worry about any issues with the switches. So... These are the bubblegum switches. That's so much nicer than... Again, stock is not bad. Um, it's, it's these switches. If they were long pull, if it, just two tenths of a millimeter, and we'd have a nice pop at the end, which would equate closer to this. than this or let me stick on the same row so browns bubblegum browns see so that's why i think this is the se because it just comes with the base that you can build up from i think i understand why the yeah, K named them this way now. I do not have a full set of uh, bubblegum switches. I may, if I get a chance, because I think it will provide a much different uh, sound test experience. If I have the time here, I may load up, well, one of many other switches that I have that will be hi-fi and do a comparison. But since these are brown, I will probably, actually... I have some Gatoron smoothies, just out of curiosity. I think I have enough for a whole board. But just to compare, and I know keyboard, 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 but I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I kind of, I, I, I want to show that I believe that this is, I mean, if this was a bare bone for a little bit cheaper, I think that would work great, but I like the keycaps. So, Flipping out some switches, especially at this price, um, I want to, to demonstrate. I mean, this is kind of one of the reasons why mechanical keyboards, you know, are as popular as they are. Is because you can, you know, customize them. That's why hot swap is a big thing. Because being stuck to just one switch, especially if it's a switch you don't like, but you like the keyboard, is like, ah. And not everybody wants to go and pull out a soldering iron, and I can't blame them. It, it, it's work. So let me load up these Gatoron smoothies here. All right, so Gatoron smoothies. The Otemu Brown. And the Souk Bubblegum. So, Zook Bubblegum. The Gatoron Smoothies. See, two completely different tones and so much better than just the browns. All right, so I'm a bit low on the milk sh on the um, Gatoron smoothies. Um, I do want to do a sound test with them, but that's going to be when I come back to this keyboard. We open it up. We'll take a look at what's inside. We'll change out the switches. Maybe at that point we'll do a sound test with the stock keycaps and then with another keycap set. But I want people to to see the versatility of something like this. Um, this particular, like I said, the layout 
with the F-13 or the delete the three um, columns with what a lot of manufacturers will put a badge there or something, or you could put a sticker. But this form factor has become quite prevalent um, over the last couple of years. Uh, the fact that this one actually has some flex to it makes a big difference over the original one. So it's like, okay, I can actually type on it and my hands aren't gonna get as tired as quickly. Um, that's with me anyway. When I use a tray mounted steel plate, I find that I can still code for a couple hours straight, but my hands are gonna start hurting much sooner than they're gonna, that I'm gonna feel it if, unless I'm on a gasket mounted keyboard. So if I'm gonna go for a long code session, I prefer to be on something gasket mounted with a softer plate so that it's not a harsh stop bottom out to each keystroke. So speaking of the keycaps, let's check these out real quick. Oh, keep pulling the switches up, but I actually don't find that too much of an issue. That means the tolerances are good. I, I'd rather a switch. I mean, obviously I don't want switches falling out if I flip over the keyboard, but I'd rather a switch be easier to pull out, you know, insert and remove, you know, the tolerances allow for a little bit of, you know, the differences between switch, switch manufacturers, but they're not going to like, I'm not gonna need to sit there and feel like I'm a dentist trying to pull out a tooth with a hooked root out of somebody's jaw. And I know, cause I had one, it was not fun. I literally had a dentist with his foot on my chest while he's yanking at my uh, wisdom tooth. Not a lot of wisdom there. All right, so for default keycaps, we got 1.4 millimeters of thickness for die sub PBT. That's uh, some of the better uh, it's one of the better widths that you're going to get with a uh, set of OEM or, you know, pre-built keycaps most of the time. Um, it's funny because there's a few uh, like me on our budget keys where we're like, well, if I buy the keyboard and it has switches and keycaps, I'm mostly just consider it a bare bone because I'm going to take those switches and keycaps off anyway and load them up with my own. And that's true. In most situations, there's quite a quite a few the majority of the keyboards that i i get if they have keycaps i will eventually replace the keycaps and replace the switches for something else there's very few that i say this works this way these keycaps they work for me i do wish they would have included the red um or even the yellow mustard um space bar so we could you know change up the little bit of color but this works for me i like the smaller legends i know i'm like ah smaller legends i like that they're centered and I like that, you know, the, the font has been minimized. It makes it feel retro yet modern. I don't know if that makes too much sense. But so we have decent keycaps. We have the hi-fi already set up. We have a PC plate. We have a gasket mount. We have a knob. We're going to have to take a look at the software, but I'm almost positive it's not going to be able to be uh, changed as with a lot of these. But if it can, fingers crossed. All right, let me turn it on there real quick. Looks like it's in a Bluetooth mode. It looks like we have some very, very nice lights. They're quite bright. And thankfully they are south facing though, as I've said many times, uh, there's very little interference with uh, cherry keycaps. A lot of the, um, I mean, these are 1.4, these are cherry, and we're using Otemu switches that even Otemu switches have modified their molds so there's no interference anymore. So that whole south versus north, if you want shine through keycaps, it's going to be easier to find a set to your liking if you go with north facing, as most, most keycaps do the shine through through the legend and the legends on the north side of the keycap. If you have south facing keyboard and you want shine through, you're gonna want to look for a keycap set that has front or side shine through so that it can actually use the light, the LED that's located at the south position of the PC. Well, we have some really nice uh, LEDs that come through. I, I know a lot of people are like, well, what's the point of having RGB if you have opaque keycaps? It's so that you can get that light in between. I like it. Uh, so function escape resets the keyboard. And then we can lock windows. We can actually, so it does have a layer and it says function Z will lock you into that layer. Huh. 
function spacebar will query battery. We're at 90% right now. Does that come across on the screen? Yeah. Anyway, you can read it. Yeah, these are actually pretty bright. I've got the lights on pretty bright, and these are coming through just fine. We have the other keys, such as insert. Insert is FNJ, which I don't get. If I can program a layer, it's going to be function delete for me. It says it has three layers. Function, function Z for layer one, function X for layer two, function C for layer three. Hmm. We'll have to check that out. Function backspace will uh, get us to monochrome colors. So we can select individual colors, and single colors for the whole backlight. Function enter will turn off the LEDs altogether. Function backspace will cycle through all the different effects. And of course, we do have uh, the pocket for the 2.4 gigahertz receiver right here is a nice, uh, I do believe these have a magnet if I'm not mistaken, but I have not had, well, knock on wood, I haven't had any of these um, that are this model fall out at any point. Yeah, it wants to connect to Bluetooth. Let me see. Uh, all in all, we have a decent plastic 75% keyboard in an off-white, which is, that's my jam. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the Gamma K TK 75 SE. It is a three mode, 81 key, 75% mechanical keyboard with a knob. It is available with your choice of Otomu brown or yellow pre lube switches. Preloaded with Die Sub PBT Retro or 9009, 1.4 millimeter thick cherry keycaps. It is loaded with a flex cut gasket mount polycarbonate plate and a three and five pin hot swap south facing PCB with both PET and IXPE or hi-fi layers. This keyboard comes weighing in at 930 grams and has a battery capacity of 4,000 milliamp hours. The chin of this keyboard sits at 20 millimeters while the back sits at 30 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of six degrees. Flipping down the first set of fold down feet will take the back height to 35 millimeters, changing your angle of typing to eight degrees. And finally flipping out the final set of fold down feet will raise the back up to 41 millimeters and your angle of typing to 11 degrees. This keyboard currently MSRPs for $69.99 on Gamma K's website. All right, so I took a quick look at the software. First off, it's nice to see that Gamma K actually has an all-in-one package for a lot of their keyboards, and they also have a Mac OS version of that. So if you're natively on Mac, that's a good thing. Now, went to the website, I downloaded the all-in-one uh, 220 version for this uh, that included this particular keyboard. As you can see, it uh, covers other keyboards as well. Um, as soon as I installed it, I ran it. The device was uh, found immediately and it just did some, I guess, first time setups. Now, uh, the layers are static layers. It's not something that you can switch to uh, momentarily with the function key. So you can change the functionality of the knob but only in different layers. So you can't do function in something. But that would mean that you could say, hey, function or my layer two is for video editing and my layer three is for music editing. And, you know, have this scrub the timeline or whatever other functionality, as long as you can do it with mouse or key combinations, then you can program that to do it. Um, it does have pretty good functionality when it comes to that. Um, so you're not going to be able you can do function combinations but you can only do it with keys that are not already bound to system things so i was able to do function delete to export insert for me it also has the functionality for per key rgb along with that there's also a gallery of shared uh, patterns both lighting effects as well as just static uh, color sets that people have uploaded and you can actually just download them without having to create an account but they have a section for creating your account 
where you can share and you know get likes and everything they're trying to make it like a community i've seen a few software packages do this i don't personally go for that i've got communities already um i'm set up but some people might actually like this and you know i don't know people wanted to like collaborate together to make a particular pattern because our whether it's uh light patterns uh, macros for different games or software you can share things like that um the macro is is fairly simple i mean it allows you to set up how many times you want to um to run the macro you can record it you know test it all of that and then you do have the uh the main section where they have the about where you can update uh, the firmware as well as the current software so now when it comes to the price um, 69.99 is the msrp um, currently i'm looking at the amazon listing has it at 62.99 with a uh, five percent off coupon i think i've seen it lower than that when i first got the keyboard so this keyboard is going to fluctuate in price um, due to the fact that what is available in the market right now especially considering some of the aluminum keyboards perhaps bare bone that are in you know this price range of the or the msrp price range i think that this is a good value at say 50 and maybe below 69.99 i think it's a little bit of a stretch i mean yes you can put some better switches and some better keycaps and you are going to have a keyboard that you're going to be happy with but we have to work with what's in the market right now. So if you do like this keyboard, I would definitely keep an eye out um, for uh, sales. And I will also see if I can get a discount code. So it'll get you guys a discount if you want to get it directly from Gamma K. Um, but because this does have, like I said, some things that a few other keyboards in this price range may not have, like mac software um the per key rgb it does have some you know you can actually do function with any key not with the knob but with any key combination that is not already mapped to something in the system so about half the keyboard you have that you can still map keys to so and and like i said it's if you ever wanted the t the if you ever wanted the nj80 th80 one of these um this one's gasket mounted. This one has a PC plate. This one has the hi-fi layers. It's going to be a much better option because it is basically an updated or upgraded version of that. Um, but the software is actually, in my opinion, better than what, um, especially what the TH80 had. I don't even want to go there. What we have nowadays is just, honestly, I am amazed every day at the quality of keyboards that are now available that two or three years ago would have been a group buy that you would have had to wait a year and a half for you would have paid hundreds of dollars for and now you could just order and have in a couple of days so but there is still a place for plastic keyboards that are wireless because i mean most people i assume get wireless i mean yes i do know that there are people that get wireless just to you know minimize clutter i get that um i prefer wired less latency and i don't have to worry about a battery uh, any keyboard that i know that i'm going to end up you know using regularly at my desk i usually unplug the battery so i don't have to worry about any spicy pillows there is still a place and there will remain a place for plastic keyboards for those that need to travel with them and one that is as well appointed as this one is having the hi-fi layers having good dampening having decent enough software i mean we can't always get qmk and via and i mean i have to be honest i'm a programmer so qmk and via is second nature to me but there are a lot of people that don't want to mess with via they don't get the whole having to load an extra file um they don't get the web interface they don't and, and that's there's that's okay I mean, that's just some people prefer an easier interface. Now, is this the perfect interface? No, but I've definitely seen much worse. So the software for this is going to be usable enough. And most people are going to be able to use it without having to look up for help. Plus, if you're running Mac and you're running Mac and or Windows, you can program it in both operating systems. I'm a Linux guy, so I don't win in that department, but I can always just plug it into my Windows machine, set it up the way I want, 
and then not worry about it because it's all in memory at that point. So anyway, uh, that was the look of the Gamma K TK75 SE. And like I said, they call this more the, the, the starter or the lower board because it comes with the Otomu switches and it's limited in switch choices because you got the Otomu browns or the Otomu yellows, but they're actually, I mean, I'm going to be replacing, yes. But for a lot of people, they may be just enough because they're they're the pro version i i guess because they don't have any ping so with regular auto moves you'd have a lot of ping and it would just be unbearable especially if you were dealing with an aluminum or, metal or steel plate but because these don't have any ping and they actually have like i said these browns are a little bit more tactile than regular gator or cherry browns i think a lot of people will actually be fine with that if they're not really looking for that hi-fi kind of sound but you have that option if you do or sometime in the future want to upgrade the switches then you can take some like i will be doing like i said if you really want to see me open it up do some mods change out the switches send me some comments below more comments i get the quicker i'll get to it i'm i'm confident that we will be able to make this sound so much better and so much livelier more hi-fi uh, with just a little bit of elbow grease and changing out some switches and i'll probably stick to these keycaps because i got nothing against 9009 and nothing against 80s retro anyway folks i do hope that you have an awesome day and until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on